It's about two things, really. It's about growing the business case for natural capital valuation and how you use it in a business. And the second thing is this project called the Natural Capital Protocol. And this is about developing what in the future will be the standardized way for a business to do this valuation and use it in a whole range of applications from supply chain management decisions through to financial accounting, for example. In terms of the shift that you see, it's different, you know, if it's the CEO or the CFO or the head of sustainability. Mm. It's, it's a different message they're getting. And I think probably the most transformative one is when the CFO understands financially that the costs and benefits of the company and the business model at the moment are quite different when you add in the natural capital and that they see this great value in understanding that, that light bulb moment going on. And, and assuming it's spoken about in their language, which is key, is, is really um, mm. you know, a, a, a great thing when it happens. One of the reasons why natural capital valuation can help to accelerate market transformation on sustainability in apparel, but also other sectors, is that it is the missing link. You know, for years we've gotten really sophisticated in business at understanding our sustainability impacts and managing them. But Still, we don't understand financially the implications of that. What are the real costs and benefits? And therefore, we really don't understand the risks and opportunities to the business. So that is um, a key feature of natural capital valuation. It provides that missing link to translate the impacts that a business has on the environment and its dependencies into financial terms. And the other big benefit of that is you get interest from the financial decision makers like the CFO in a business. And once you get their interest, you really get the real decision makers on board. Quite a number of things need to happen. So first of all, having clear standardized metrics is, is one piece of that, and that's what we're focusing on in the coalition. But then outside of that, supports that are based upon that approach will be very important. Um, the development of data in a way that business can use it so they understand valuations for different forms of natural capital. I think the big elephant in the room, though, for, for what is needed is about incentives in the market, because at the moment, our business models just do not ask for this sort of information. As a matter of fact, the opposite business models don't take it into account. So I think that's a big feature. We really need incentives in the market. We need to make this transformation towards a green economy where these things are part and parcel of how financial accounting is done. Status in terms of natural capital deg degradation is that businesses are incentivized to actually degrade mm. natural capital. Mm. Um, not because they wish to do that necessarily, mm. or they don't know any better, because financially, these the costs and benefits of that are just not taken into account in a market mm. context. Mm. So um, the status is still very early days in terms of that. And this is why raising awareness on the business case, starting to develop the metrics and tools, starting to look at policy incentives and so forth are, are so important as next step. It's a really good point. I think that the ultimate goal in the future would be that natural capital and also social capital would be considered as other forms of financial capital are at the moment in a business, and that is the norm, mm. uh, whether you're a large business or whether you're a small business. At this, at this point in time, the status is that there are really only a small number of businesses who are interested in this, and typically they're large. Typically they are in, or they are in sectors where uh, the um, natural capital risks are quite high for that 
hot business, so the food sector, the mining sector, we see a certain amount of activity in the energy sector. So it's that they're really the reasons why you don't see too many small businesses talking about this at the moment, but it will be as important to small businesses as it is to large businesses. It's really about what sector you're in and how you draw from natural capital, how dependent you are on natural capital as to whether it's, it's important to the business. From the work that we've done with business in the coalition to date, um, the the motivations we're seeing for, for business to get interested in natural capital is really coming from risk mitigation. Um, also, we see an interest from financial institutions for that perspective as well, but they're looking across their portfolios and potential risk. We do have some nice case examples of companies who have also availed of a benefit um, so I think that is a very important story that needs to grow as part of the business case for natural capital in the future, particularly if you're a very large landowner, you have many market opportunities in terms of the positive aspects of natural capital. But, but at the moment, the interest, um, I think it's fair to say, is mainly coming from risk mitigation, concerns about resource scarcity and so forth. There's a range of different ways that we're seeing companies use natural capital valuation at the moment. You have the example like Puma and Caring Group looking at, you know, very innovatively putting it into the profit and loss. Um, you also see companies uh, looking at how it relates to informing internal management decisions. So for example, maybe at their site for uh, making green infrastructure decisions, Dow Chemical Company in the US has done this very famously and done some great case studies on how they've used valuation for that. Um, also, the other way we're seeing it used is to inform supply chain management decisions, new material choices, sourcing decisions, the geographies where things are sourced from and so forth. Uh, so they're the other applications. So there are a number of ways we're starting to see business use this. And uh, I think that until there are more incentives um, to disclose valuation, it is a challenge for companies to use valuation in a way that Puma and caring have and to put that information out there because there's pros and cons to do that if your competitors aren't doing that so we're, we're still at an early stage on, on that use. Yes, in actual fact, I think that it is really increasingly going to be an essential for a company to take into account its natural, uh, natural capital, particularly where a company is heavily dependent uh, in terms of raw materials on natural resources, because that, that um, ability to source those and to source them in certain places in, is increasingly being impacted. So not knowing that information with enough time to do something about it and start to enhance those resources resources rather than deplete them will be something that increasingly we'll see businesses being impacted by. I think there is a role for the consumer in this, but I think the main role is with the business in terms of doing the valuation and then understanding how they use that information. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, because it is about understanding uh, the full cost or benefit of something, it could impact the price of that good or service. Um, so it's it's possible that that could be then used for you know to inform the consumer more. Um, they obviously make a decision on whether they wish to pay more or less in terms of their choice of product, which we see already. But I think that's probably downstream more the role of the consumer would, would come into play than at the moment. If I was to genuinely look for a game changer that could change things quite quickly, I would look at increased incentive structures. That's what I would look at. I would look at potentially policy measures that make requirements for specific forms of, of disclosure on natural capital where it's material to the business for, for different sectors. That I think is a game changer. Um, uh, other ones that are potentially more long term are the use of technology like remote sensing and 
satellite technology for gathering this form of data, particularly the complexity of biodiversity, um, different world regions that may be inaccessible and so forth. There's a wonderful leapfrogging opportunity in that. And that's something we're looking at in the protocol with the data developers on how we can really try to use that leapfrogging ability.